Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Big Baby JTV. Like, comment, sub. Do not forget to get on the Patreon. Show love to your boy. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. The topic I'm going to talk about is not so fun, and that's the topic of Mr. Brian Flores, right? Former Miami Dolphins coach, head coach, uh, Afro-Latino from Honduras, being essentially fired after winning. (laughs) Uh, And he got fired after winning. It was one of the most shocking moves that happened this offseason in football that eventually led to him this week, specifically on the first day of Black History Month, five days ago on Monday, he put out a lawsuit against the NFL, the Miami Dolphins, the New York Giants, the Denver Broncos, right? Why? Because of racism, discriminatory hiring practices, and essentially just pure racism and bias and discrimination about head coaching, head coaching positions. And inside his lawsuit, 60-page lawsuit, right, he claimed that the Miami Dolphins would uh, go out of their way, the owner of the Miami Dolphins would go out of his way, actually, to uh, give Flores $100,000. He was willing to give him $100,000 for him to lose games in order to get high, higher draft picks, hopefully become the number one draft draft pick, get the number one draft pick to get Joe Burrow, right? So this was about two years ago when they got Tua instead, right? And what happened was essentially, long story short, what is happening is that Brian Flores said no, and Brian Flores, Flores is one of the reasons that he is suing the Miami Dolphins because of that. Another thing he alleged inside the lawsuit was that was basically that uh, the Denver Broncos, uh, when they were trying to get him to to interview him, they showed up about two hours late for one. (laughs) And uh, John Elway and other members of the executives who were, you know, essentially interviewing him were drunk, right? Essentially also claiming that when he wanted to get hired by the New York Giants, he had an interview with them, but they had already decided that they were going to go with Brian Dayball. How did he find that out? He found that out through text with Bill Belichick, where Bill Belichick congratulated Brian Flores for the New York Giants job, right? When in reality, he was meant to send that text to Brian Dayball. You know what I'm saying? Bill Belichick is almost 70 years old, man. Like, come on. What do you expect, man? He's a boomer. They make them type of mistakes, okay? But Brian Flores had all these allegations and all these things in his lawsuit. And, man, as a black man, for one, I support him. For two, I also have some questions, man. I also have some questions. And it's okay to have questions. I support my fellow black man because, yes, the NFL has very, very racist ignorant, nepotism-based hiring practices, especially when it comes to coaches. You have guys like Dan Campbell from the from the Detroit Lions, right? Went three and I think 14, three, 14 and one or something like that. Something crazy like that. Still has a job. David Cully won more games than Dan Campbell and David Cully is currently fired. I'm not saying that Dan Campbell or David Cully are good coaches. We don't know yet because they've only had one year of coaching. You have a coach like Steve Wilkes, right? He used to coach the Arizona Cardinals, black male, right? He was there for just one season, and then they got rid of him and hired Cliff Kingsbury, right? Cliff Kingsbury came in with a record of like 30 and 40 as a head coach in college, 30 and 40. And Cliff Kingsbury is also known for ruining the end of his like the the end of his season for almost all his teams end up terrible. He's a front starter, right? He's a front starter meaning that he will win a lot of games in the beginning, but at the end of the season and in the playoffs he is almost always going to lose. Look at the Arizona Cardinals. Arizona Cardinals should have went further. They got humiliated by the Rams. It's a fact. Those are figgy facts, okay? Then you have guys like Matt Rule, right? 
Matt Rule should not even be coaching in the league if he was going by the, if we're going by the same measurements that they give Brian Flores. Right? The Carolina Panthers are trash. Trash. And they've been trash ever since Matt Rule joined them. Now, d- does that solidify Matt Rule as a terrible coach? No, I don't know that yet. He's just new. He's going to go in his fourth season. But if you were to compare Brian Flores and Matt Rule, who do you think should be in the league coaching men? Let's be real. If you watch football, I'm going to go with the dude who had two winning seasons in a row and was going to make the playoffs both those times, but he has a limited quarterback, a limited offense, and he's playing in one of the hardest divisions in the league. Okay? He has to face the Patriots multiple times a year. He has to face the Buffalo Bills multiple times a year, two of the best teams in the league. Right? Right? And Matt Rule is just over there being trash, the Carolina Panthers, ruining a uh, uh, Christian McCaffrey's prime, right? So if you guys want to fire people, fire a lot of those guys way before you get rid of a guy like Brian Flores. Brian Fro- Flores apparently was rumored to be hard to work with in Miami, but guess what? That's most head coaches. Most head coaches are not going to be just agreeable, go along to get along gang. Most head coaches are not going to be on that on that freaking Mike McCarthy ish, Jason Garrett ish. No, they're gonna be disagreeable. Doug Peterson won a Super Bowl for the Philadelphia Eagles, and how how did they reward him? They got they fired him after two seasons after a Super Bowl win. Why? Because he was disagreeable with head with head co- sorry with GM and, and and ownership. Really, that's literally why he got fired. You know what? Head coaches are supposed to disagree with GM and owners. There's supposed to be a little bit of conflict because the head coach is dealing with players on a day-to-day basis. So here's my last angle on this, man. I also think Brian Flores, he needs to understand that these institutions ain't for us, man. As black people, as black men, we need to understand what it is. We need to be put up on game, man, right? Almost all the owners are white. There's no black owner of an NFL team, right? So you're already starting off on a back foot. Now, I will give props to the NFL for this. A lot of black GMs are in the system now, and they're coming up, and I respect that. But ultimately, when it comes to hiring a coach and making final decisions on those things, it's usually 90% of the time it's the owner, okay? And we have to know these things, that a lot of black coaches are put in positions to fail. Look at Hugh Jackson. Hugh Jackson, when he was with the Raiders, he went 8-8, eight and eight, and that's when the Raiders were still effing garbage, right? They're better now, but they were still effing garbage. How did he get rewarded? Well, they got rid of him, all right? Then eventually what happened is he went to Cleveland, and they had a tanking affair for all three seasons, almost four seasons, that he coached. Why? Because they were tanking for draft picks. That's what he alleges, and I believe it, right? So what's going on is that a lot of black coaches get the rough end of the stick. Steve Wilkes, is like, like I mentioned, right? They get the rough end of the stick, and they're quick to get taken out of that position. David Cully, one season, he's out, right? So what I'm saying is this. We need to be up on game and understand the game a lot of black head coaches will not get hired, or if they do get hired, they'll get rid of them very fast. So what's the solution? Do what Deion Sanders did. I wrote about this on my blog a few years ago. Do what Hugh Jackson just recently did. Go to an HBCU. Go where you're celebrated, not tolerated, right? Because after Brian Flores wins the lawsuit, which he will, right, After they pay him a lot of money, which they will, he will never coach in the NFL again. But you know what? The XFL is coming up. Other spring football leagues are coming up. Wouldn't you want to be the face of those leagues? Brian Flores should consider that. Brian Flores should consider going to HBCUs. Yes, it doesn't have the money or the glamour or the honor of the NHL, NFL, my bad. But, bruh, you have to go where you're celebrated not tolerated. Let me know what y'all think in the comments below, man. Big Baby JTV, I'm out, bro.